I still wasn't to the point where I was willing to say, all right, that's it. The rule of law is now clearly dead. Okay, MF Global was the nail in the coffin for me. It destroyed my livelihood. There's no recourse. There's no rule of law. Innocent people all over the country and really all over the world had their property stolen with the full cooperation of the federal government, the judiciary, and the exchange. There's nothing you can do. That's it. I'm not paying into this anymore. As a responsible person with growing concerns for your privacy and personal liberty, you want to know where we're headed and what you can do about it. We ask the experts what you need to do to take prudent and responsible action to safeguard your family's wealth and well-being and what basic first steps will help you to be aware and prepared. ReluctantPreppers.com Welcome back, Reluctant Preppers. Today we're very privileged to have a special returning guest, Ann Barnhart, founder of former Barnhart Capital Management, is here to talk about a traumatic event that just happened in her life. After being an outspoken critic of taxation and taking a tax strike and speaking about it publicly, and actually had her account seized by the IRS recently. She's here to tell us her story, what happened, how it's affecting her, what it means to each of us, and the future of liberty. And also, we're going to try to take some of the viewers' questions that have been submitted over the past week for Anne herself. Anne, thank you for joining us here on Reluctant Preppers. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be back with you. Now, there's no denying, Anne, that you garner a lot of attention uh, through any of your speaking because, for one thing, your outspoken message, not only the, the content of your message, very boldly proclaiming uh, what you see as the state of uh, illegitimacy of our government or of uh, perilous risk to individuals' finances and world finances, but just by the very nature of how um, boldly you proclaim the truth as you understand it naturally seems to evoke a very polarizing um, group of responses from, from listeners. We have a number of people who are just uh, devoted fans of yours who uh, really are inspired and are very encouraged and emboldened uh, by the power and the conviction of your message. And similarly, there's there's a certain community there that, that tends to react oppositely. And But there doesn't seem to be anybody... Nobody can take Anne Barnhart lukewarm, it seems. And uh, in this case... Uh, you've also got the attention in the form of action by the IRS. And I'm wondering if first, before we get to viewers' questions, if you could just walk us through your side of the story and tell us how this all happened to you and help us understand the specifics as much as you're comfortable sharing to help us draw it in the end of how that's, how that's relevant to you going forward and to others of our listening audience. Certainly, certainly. And one point I want to expand upon that you made in your introduction is I think that one of the reasons why um, I have this, um, like, uh, people people perceive me as actually watching a watching a, um, a car wreck or something like that, it, it's that qu kind of rubbernecking dynamic. And I'm, I'm fully aware of this, and I fully, I fully acknowledge it. And I think the reason for that is that I'm actually one of the few people out there who is, uh, whether I like it or not, I, I am a talking head pundit, but I'm actually doing the stuff that I'm talking about. I am a person who has actually liquidated their estate, who has actually withdrawn from the matrix and, and gone and lived in a quote-unquote allegorical van down by the river. And I think that people in, in North America right now are really interested in, in looking at that and saying, okay, I want to see, she's, she's taking the lead, she's going out front on this. What what is what is happening to her? What is going to happen to her? How is this going to play out? Because then if I if I choose to do the same thing, she is providing I am providing a data set as to what you all can expect and how this will play out if you choose to do the, the same sorts of things that I'm doing. So the backstory is um, I first went viral in April, actually April 4th, 2011. Um, the first thing I did that went super viral on the internet was my when I burned the Koran, and I, I, that just takes forever to talk about. But I, I assume that most of your listeners are probably e even tangentially aware of, of my activism against the political system of Islam and are probably familiar with the Koran burning I did now three and a half years ago. Okay, shortly after I did that. I received notice from the IRS that I was going to be audited. Well, not surprising there. 
And when it first happened, I said, okay, this has happened. I got the letter in the mail today from the IRS that I am now under audit. I don't want to jump to the extreme to say that this is definitely because of the fact that I burned the Koran, and I don't want to leap automatically to the extreme of accusing the IRS of being a political enforcement arm. However, now, three and a half years later, we do now know uh, for a metaphysical certitude that the IRS is being used as a weapon and as a as an enforcement arm and an intimidation arm of the Washington DC regime this is just objective fact now so you know it, it lends a lot more credibility to all that the the audit began as just an audit of me personally but however at the time I was still fully in business I, it was me and and three corporations so it's me personal plus three corporations of course immediately they expanded to a full back five year audit of me personally plus each of my three corporations this drug on for a year and a half now in the interim while all this is happening six months later in um, Halloween of 2011 that's when MF global happened and I went super viral again when all of that happened and I shut down the brokerage firm it, you know in the first third of this process of being audited by the IRS and when when MF global happened and I shut down the brokerage and I saw and I knew beyond any doubt whatsoever whatsoever that the rule of law was no longer in force and that the United States I mean I, I had the, the sense that the United States ceased to exist with the usurpation by the Obama slash Washington D reg regime Washington DC regime as we know it now um, but I still wasn't to the point where I was willing to say all right that's it the rule of law is now clearly dead. Okay, MF Global was the nail in the coffin for me. It destroyed my livelihood. There's no recourse. There's no rule of law. Innocent people all over the country and really all over the world had their property stolen with the full cooperation of the federal government, the judiciary, and the exchange there's nothing you can do that's it I'm not paying into this anymore a few weeks after that literally just a few weeks after that in January of 12 that's when the Washington DC regime started stating explicitly you will pay for abortion through Obamacare and through those mandated premiums Obamacare will tax you as a human being because you wake up breathing in the morning in the United States of America that is a taxable event okay this just now confirms everything I, I, I had already known and completely confirmed me in the fact there will be no more voluntary transfer payments to the IRS that's over that's it and understand I'm in the midst of audit when I go on the record and say this so um, after that in 2012 um, in about June of 2012 what happened was was that my bank who was holding um, the last remaining mortgage I had because I had liquidated I had liquidated my main residential property I put it on the market the night Obama was elected because I knew I knew that it was over I knew that the the economy would be under relentless attack and so I knew especially holding you know a high value residential property I needed to get out of that immediately so I put that on the market and had already sold it so I made the decision that there would be no more voluntary transfer payments to the IRS and understand I made that decision whilst in the midst of being audited aggressively aggressively audited and now we can probably assume that that audit was politically and maliciously motivated so um, the process as it played out after that I had already liquidated my main residential property it was a you know is a high-end uh, residential property and as soon as Obama was elected actually I signed the papers literally on the evening of his election his usurpation I should say in 2008 because I, I knew that that 
you know, I had to get out of everything as quickly as I could in terms of high-end real estate because that all would just, that market would be destroyed. I was able to get out of that fine, but now I'm living in a residential condominium, which I had bought and was used as my office. My office was in a residential condominium that I bought explicitly for that purpose so that we would have a kitchen and that my, my staff could come with their kids and there wouldn't be that, that unpleasant office building dynamic. It, and it was really great. And so I just went and lived there. Okay, here's what happened. When you have a mortgage and you do not file a tax return, which I did not, I do not have a tax return filed now, and you're a self-employed person, my bank, which happened to be Wells Fargo, said to me, okay, you're, you're not in compliance, even though you've never missed a payment, you've never been late on a payment, obviously. I mean, just perfect record throughout my adult life, of course. Ever, all bills were coming out of the bank account automatically, never late, no problem. They said, if you can't provide a tax return and you can't provide us with a proof of income vis-a-vis -a, -vis a tax return, then you will be foreclosed upon. Okay, I was formally foreclosed upon on the 28th of December of 2012. And I had talked to realtors and they said, look, this process, this, this drags out and this goes on and on and on. It usually, you've got at least a year and a half, you've got at least 18 months for this process to play out. My property sold, was scheduled to sell on the courthouse steps the last week of April of 2012. And it, it was, the auction was delayed twice and I believe that it sold on the courthouse steps in Douglas County, Colorado, the first week of June of 2012. It was the fastest foreclosure and liquidation that I think anyone has ever seen or heard of. And I, I just look at that and I, I stroke my facial hair, let's say, when, when I realize how fast that happens when you realize that there are, in fact, people who end up squatting in these foreclosed homes for years and years and years. My auction was scheduled for four months and actually happened right at, right at less than, well, no, right at six months or a little less after my initial notice of being foreclosed upon. That's kind of interesting. So again, into the data set for you guys out there, if you have mortgages, if you have any collateralized debt at all, mortgage, car, collateralized means something with physical collateral behind it, not just a credit card or an unsecured line of credit. If you have any collateralized debt at all, one of the things I recommend when people are saying, well, wait, I've got all these IRAs and I've got all this money in the bank that you're saying I should get it out of the bank. What should I do with it? Number one, item number one that I would give to you is if you can pay off collateralized debt and get free and clear title on, on physical property, that would be my recommendation number one. Because understand, they can be selective in, as to how they enforce the foreclosure process and how quickly you can actually be thrown out of your house through the foreclosure process. And I don't think knowing everything we know now about how this regime operates and how the banksters are tied into the government and the IRS is tied into all this and they're all sharing information with each other and it's this incestuous fascistic relationship between the governments and the banks and so on and so forth. It is perfectly reasonable to assume that they can then query your political um, history and opinions and use that as a factor to determine how quickly these processes are going to move out. So when you hear examples, for example, of, you know, people, you know, uh, people in in the black community who went in and got the um, the ninja loans, the no income, no job and got 125% mortgages on $400,000 houses with no income and no job, and then go into foreclosure and are still able to stay in the house for years and years and years on end. What you need to understand is that those that set of rules, quote unquote, is not going to apply to you. You could be out in as quick as six months if this happens to you. And if you if you want to protect against that, if you have the savings and if you have the ability to do it, I would recommend paying off collateralized 
um, notes and mortgages and loans and own stuff as much as you can. 